Hi, this is Yuan Bo Xiangli. I'm going to present our book, Real or Not Real, That is the Question, a joint work done with Yi Bin Deng, Bo Dai, and our supervisors Chen Chen Loi and Da Hua Lin. Just to recap, GAN is a generative model consists of a generator and a discriminator playing zero-sum game, where D tries to distinguish generated samples from the real ones and G learns to fool D. So with that in mind, let's take a look at these two groups of images. Despite none of these are of real people, the ones on the left look more realistic to us. As a comparison, we are able to classify the right ones as fake easily. Their realness is reduced due to various reasons. For example, people in the leftmost column seem to have inharmonious facial structures, and the texture of the images in the middle column uh, looks distorted, while the portraits in the last column have bizarre background. So looking back at how we determine whether an image looks real or not, our perception of realness actually depends on various aspects. Motivated by this observation, we propose to represent realness as a random variable instead of a single scalar. Here, 0 and 1 basically serve as two anchors, where 0 stands for the concept of fake and 1 stands for real. So we can simply substitute them with A0 and A1 for a more general usage. Therefore, in the standard setting, dx is a scalar and these two anchors are also scalars. If we are to treat the x as a random variable, in other words, in the form of a distribution, a0 and a1 should also be converted into distributions over the same set of outcomes. Similarly, we adopt callback labeler divergence to measure the distance between dx and these two anchors. For simplicity, we'll refer our work as realness scan in the following context. Theoretically, realness GAN and the standard GAN share similar guarantees on optimality and convergence, and the proof can be found in our paper. To bring more insight, next we'll move on to some empirical analysis. Let's start with mode coverage. We compared realness GAN with the standard GAN and some of its variations on a 3x3 mixture of Gaussian dataset. From the result, we can see that data modes recovered by realness GAN has higher diversity and the samples are more compact compared to other loss functions. And in this page, we share a very interesting finding. So suggested by the original objective function of realness scan, G is trained by maximizing the divergence between the fake anchor A0 and the DX, which actually imposes few constraints on the generator. But surprisingly, with this overly loose Objective, we actually can get results that are meaningful to some extent, like the silhouettes showed in this slide. And by increasing the divergence between two anchors, the samples look uh, now look much better as we can see facial features clearly. However, due to the fact that D is not always at its optimal as assumed by theory, training with this objective is not ideal as expected. Therefore, we introduce a regularization term into G's original objective, which is realized by pulling fixed samples closer to either the real samples or the real anchor A1. And the samples quality improves significantly, as we can see in this snapshot. In experiments, realness scan was implemented using this against architecture. On the left is a typical training curve we obtained. Overall, realness scan outperforms baselines in metrics and its learning process appear to be uh, much steadier. And on the left, we dis uh, on the right, we display some samples generated by uh, the model trained on CIFA-10 and CLAB-A respectively. It is also worth mentioning that realness scan trained on FFHQ dataset is on par with StyleGAN. However, since we are not using a progressive architecture, the training process is less time consuming and also occupies less computer resources. To sum it up, realness scan is a generalization of the standard GAN. And by directly looking into the underlying distribution of realness, the generator now receives a more informative learning signal. And additionally, this concept can be flexibly extended to various architectures like progressive GAN and conditional GAN without introducing much overhead.
Thank you for listening.